Hello guys, end of the month, so another 3ds Max news and I stay until the end because we had a lot of news regarding 3ds Max and a lot of cool projects. So let's just start. Now all Thinkbox products are going open source. Some months ago we saw that all Thinkbox products were free, but right now we have Krakatoa for Maya and Xmesh for Maya. They are as well open source. You can download the source code, you can fix bugs, you can add whatever you want. Um, yeah, open source. Uh, but I know that after these ones, we will have Frost, Genome, Stock, Deadline that will follow the open source uh, guide. So we will have all this uh, software that is awesome open source. On the description link, there is this post from AWBS where they talk about that. And there is a cool talk with Skyline VFX where I work that explains how we are using in-house the Thinkbox product. We have shots from Stranger Things, The Grey Man, the Adam Project, Aquaman, and Game of Thrones, and others. And yeah, we use Krakatoa, Frost, Xmesh pretty intensively in all of, sh of the shows. It's great to move data across Max, Maya, Houdini, to manipulate data with Magma Flow. And on my main channel, I cover a tutorial covering a stock. And on Patreon, it's a total of five videos where my patrons have access to them, where we will go deeper into magma flow, into rendering with Krakatoa, and how you can use it together with type flow or thinking particles to create cool effects together with a stock and magma flow. This month, we get as well a new Arnold 7.1.4, and with it, a new Max 2A, that is the bridge between 3ds Max and Arnold. This new update comes with automatic generation for TX files that is always on and where the textures are now generated on demand. Max 2A now supports the standard object properties like visibility spinners and different visibility flags and now, now they can be used. Arnold Render View is on by default. Physical materials are translated to Arnold shaders, way more efficient. And Arnold representation for a standard surface on viewport is now working. We get as well sharper textures through reflections and refractions, and multiple USD enhancements with Material X shader support, Alembic support, Imager support, and more. The popular scatter solution for 3ds Max gets a huge update with Forest Pack 8. On this new version, i2 Software added Forest Sets, that is a collection of objects for easily populate your Forest Pack with existing collection of elements. You can as well use dynamically layers in 3ds Max, where your collections will be populated automatically with any elements existing inside this layer. There is a possibility to link to areas and surfaces used in other forest pack objects. This way, you don't need to assign a spline multiple times across multiple forest packs. Multiple improvements on forest effects, like ability to reference a splines that are independent of distribution areas, forest effects can now be filtered, and new forest effects presets has been added. Other improvements has been done like vertex color support in Arnold, improvements in V-Ray using CPU, and added a preset library of high quality photo scan leaf and way more. Cine Software released new versions for Forensic, Unite, Jumble, and Illumi plugins, as well new Max scripts. The common thing with all of them is that the interface has been rewritten to Qt for faster speeds and now they are resizable, and they add support for Arnold renderer on Illumi. Spline Dynamics released a sneak peek of the next script that they are developing that it's called Randomixer. It was available on beta that now has been closed. If you were lucky to join, uh, maybe you are inside the beta. Basically, it allows to create multiple variations of different scenes with few clicks. You can randomize positions, objects, colors, materials, textures, lights, uh, a lot of things. It's ideal to create interior variations, asset dressing, and obviously NFT tokens can be another of the possibilities. Ivermotion released Arch Models Volume 267, and it's a collection of office and residential buildings inspired in New York. What sets this collection apart from the rest is that they are totally procedural models. They are already set up with Ray Clone, and as you can see on the videos, you can do variations on the spline base, create more or less floors, you can randomize all types of uh, small elements like antennas or uh, signs in the facade, a lot of cool stuff. So if you need to do a lot of different buildings, this can be a great solution. Render Stacks updated to 2.59. It's adding Chaos Player support and some fixes. 
V-Ray released a V-Ray build adding support to export V-Ray data to USD. It's using the SDK provided by Autodesk that it's in development right now with the Max to USD beta. So basically, you will need the USD to 3ds Max beta version from Autodesk and download the special V-Ray build that if you want, you will have the link on the description below. Once exported, you will be able to load back in Houdini and or Maya. Uh, so yeah, great if you need to move data between applications. And we didn't have any news of a new Typeflow version since I think it's two months now, and that was weird. So this month, Tyson showed in what he has been working on. So we had improvements on the Boronoi solver. Now it's way more stable, avoiding black faces. We, if you was doing multiple Boronois one over the other, it was possible that you get weird artifacts. Now this will be fixed. And most important, he showcased a sneak peek of the terrain generation functions that he's building inside Typeflow. As you can see, we have only one image, but it's building uh, multiple terrain operations that you can stack inside Typeflow. Right now, looks like we have 18 operators, and who knows, maybe we'll have more. But you can check all this information in the Typeflow group in Facebook. As well, on this group, a new contest has been announced. The prize will be three Typeflow Pro license for the three winners of the, of the contest. So December 4th, a theme will be announced. So make sure that you are on the Typeflow group and people will have until December 11th to participate, submitting a video that can be between four to six seconds long. And it's according to that theme that they will talk. Pretty cool prize, I think, three Typeflow Pro versions. Remember that the last Friday was Black Friday, but some offers will last still a little longer. So I created a list on my website on www.ambfx.com with all the promotional codes for good offers that are related to 3ds Max. I have offers for plugins, scripts, tutorials, and 3D assets. So check it out. And it's time of our favorite section, 3ds Max is only for RGB. And we will start really strong because we have Will Wallace. And Will Wallace, uh, I have been working with him at a Scanline for when I joined, he was there. And this was like eight years ago. I am so lucky to work with so talented people. And Will is one of these guys that he is really good with everything he does. All the animation, layout and effects is done by Will Wallace. The Humvee animation is built with Matt Carr in 3ds Max and he captured it with an Xbox controller. You can see it on the making of, pretty cool use of 3ds Max creating in real time these types of animations. All the effects, RBDs and Pyro, it's done in Houdini and transferred to 3ds Max, where in 3ds Max he's rendering everything using V-Ray. Animes Studios, they created the character animation for this shot and it's called Dystopia 2022. Pretty cool, but it's not the only thing that he did. He has been working on this project. This car project was done some months ago, but now because we had V-Ray 6, he reworked the project using V-Ray 6 Sky for the clouds and the new scatter in V-Ray. So you can see the result here done by one guy. Uh, awesome stuff, Will. Jonah using shared a cool crowd shots that he did using Typeflow, 3ds Max and V-Ray for a spot at a space office. Uh, very cool stuff. I see more and more Typeflow used for crowds. And as you can see here, it's a pretty good tool for this type of works. We have Masashi Imagawa that shared on ArtStation this cool telecommunications based futuristic shot done for the KV3D challenge. To me, remembers of District 9. And yeah, it's great. He has been using Gaia, 3ds Max and Nuke. And we changed to these very cool motion graphics shots done by Alex Malsev using Typeflow and Redshift. It's very simple, but a very cool use of cloth solver in Typeflow with an amazing result. And you all know that 3ds Max is only used in ArchVid when some of the best artists in ILM post constantly how they are using 3ds Max in different movies, not ArchVid. Uh, on a stack, Alex Nice shared this amazing work that he did as a generalist at one of the best VFX companies in the world. He did this work as concept illustrations for Obi-Wan three years ago, and as he claims, he says 3ds Max is the best generalist tool around and I will die on that hill. And yeah, awesome work from Alex Nis. And also, you know that 3ds Max is only for ArchVid and absolutely not for animation when you see on this making of the characteristic biped from 3ds Max. I don't want to lie, I have no idea what this is, I don't know the company exactly, 
It's on a Twitter with uh, Chinese characters, I think. So if anyone knows any more information about that, on the comments, let me know, because we'll like to know. But yeah, it's this great anime uh, movie, I think. And you can see the characteristic viped on the play blast that when you see it, you know that this is 3ds Max. And even more animation in 3ds Max by AJ Jefferies. Jefferies worked on one episode for Storyboards Answer Time. It's a kids show on Netflix. I don't know because I don't have Netflix, but yeah, looks pretty cool. The first shot with no cuts was designed, animated, and rendered by Jefferies alone. And for the rest of the four shots was animated by Lauren Hammond and rendered by Robert Showalter. Everything is 3ds Max, rendered in V-Ray, using Typeflow and Kinematic Labs over Morpher plugins. You can see all these videos on a stack group on Facebook. Check a stack because it's a very cool group where there is, they are posting a lot of stuff every day. And a lot of the things that you can see on 3ds Max is only for Archvith comes from a stack. Amazing group. 80 Level published a lot of artwork shared by artists that work on the A Plague Tale Requiem, it's a video game. And if you check any of the artists on ArtStation, you will see that, uh, yes, once more, 3ds Max is using video games too. From characters to environments, a lot of cool stuff coming from this company that create A Plague Tale Requiem. Uh, yeah, amazing stuff. Not everything will be animation, I saw this amazing model, it's a demon, an impressive 3D model shared by Vladislav Osiasia. The only information I can see about that is that he used 3ds Max, V-Ray and Photoshop, but the model is impressive, alone, without animation, so yeah, pretty cool. And we will end with this funny and excellent short by Luke. Luke has been on the 3ds Max, is only for RGB sometimes because he created a lot of cool stuff. And this one is called The Watcher, with the only description of Do you ever get that feeling like you are being watched? And uh, yeah, it's super funny, I like the characters, the models are great. And he says that he used 3ds Max, Typeflow, Forest Pack, Ornatrix, Redshift for rendering, ZBrush, Madbox, and After Effects. So that's a wrap up guys, I hope that you like a lot of things this month, a lot of cool stuff done in 3ds Max. Every time I have hard time, I need to cut some stuff because I have so much things and I want to fit it in a 10 minutes video more or less. I hope that you found stuff to buy during the Black Friday. Remember to check my website with the links. I hope that you found something interesting. And once again, thanks a lot to all my patrons. They, it's helping me tremendous to keep doing these videos because it takes a considerable amount of time. I think I support also interesting stuff, they have exclusive content, so if you want to know more about Typeflow, Krakatoa, Stock, you can, and you can ask me whatever you want that I co can cover, if I have time, I will do it. So yeah, if you like these videos, please remember to give a like, give a comment, I love comments, and share it with your friends, guys. See you soon, bye.